Hey, and welcome to AudioTech's first video tutorial on Cubase 6.5. In this first episode, I'll cover the basic layout of Cubase and help you set up your personal preferences. So let's get started. The first thing you see when you open Cubase is the project assistant. From here you can open your recent project files, or you can start from scratch using either a template or just creating a blank session file. So let's do that now. Down here at the bottom you can choose either to use the default location, which can be customized right here, or you can prompt for project location. I recommend always creating a new folder for a new project, so that the project file and all audio clips will be put in the same folder. So let's do that by pressing new folder and calling it test projects. Pressing enter and OK. So this is how Cubase looks when you create a blank session. Right here you have your activate projects. You can set up your window layout right here. This is your transport panel. And this is your tools and I'll get into them just in a bit. You can choose to snap to your grid and change how you relate to the grid. And here's your audio warping and quantizing presets. Before getting into the menus or how to use the tools, you need to set up your audio interface to work with Cubase. So right here on top, head for devices. Click that and head down to device setup at the bottom. This is where you configure your MIDI devices or configure your audio devices. So from the top head down to VST audio system and select your ACO driver right here. If you use an external audio interface, it's very important to choose the corresponding ACO driver for that one. I use the MR816 CSX from Steinberg and Yamaha. So this is the one I choose. Click that. If everything's okay, you should it should show your input and output latency right here and the hard, hardware assembly rate. There's also the advanced options section and I won't get that too much into that one right now. But basically you can set up, for instance, if, if you use a dual core or quad core processor, if it should use more than one core and also which priority audio has in relation to, for instance, MIDI material. By pressing on the ACO driver right down below, you can go to your control panel for your, for your uh, interface and change things such as your sample rate or the buffer size. So for instance, if I change my buffer size from 2048 samples to 160, the uh, input and output latency will be <laughs> quite lower. And also you can switch your inputs and outputs and in, for instance, ADAT or SPDIF uh, channels to uh, show up or not in the program. So that's all for now. Let's press OK and hit back. The next thing to do is to set up the project specific settings. So head to project on top and choose project setup or press shift plus S. In the project setup dialog, there's only two things you, uh, you need to be concerned about changing. And that's the sample rate and the bit resolution. So the sample rate should correspond with the one set on your audio interface. On mine right now it's 48,000 kilohertz. And the bit resolution should be at least 24 bits if you're recording music. That's my recommendation. Or you can set it to a 32-bit float point mode. If you are primarily working with samples, they are most likely 44.1 thousand kilohertz in sample rate and, a, and have a resolution of 16 bits. So in that case, you should change it to 44 and 16 bits. But most likely you are recording music where the resolution should be at least a 24-bit resolution. 44 upon 1, 1000 is fine. Um, but you should notice that as the, f the higher you go in sampler rate, the more disk uh, space it will take and also and of the same reasons uh, computer uh, power so just choose 48 and um, and let's head on by pressing OK now let's set up your key commands 
It's pretty easy to load a template, for instance, Logic presets or Pro Tools presets, and I actually recommend doing that. Personally, I use the Pro Tools presets because I think they are very handy. So um, whether you like them or not, hit to File on top and go down to Key Commands. As I said, you can open a preset right here, for instance, the Logic or Pro Tools presets. And I've made my own one from the Pro Tools key commands. I really recommend you do this. I think at least you should make shortcuts for opening new audio or MIDI tracks. You will spare some time if you do this. All right, now let's set up your preferences. Again, go to File and head to Preferences. In Preferences, you can change the overall preferences of Cubase, such as the appearance of the meters or the appearance of the waveforms, and also to change how the program behaves. For instance, with the transport panel, whether it returns to the start position when you press stop. For that specific thing, you can head to transport and you can change it right here. For more info on the preferences panel, you can press help. Um, and it will show you some more specific things. All right, let's press OK and hit back. The last thing you need to set up right now is the audio inputs and outputs, the routing. And you can do that by heading to devices once again and pressing VST connections or pressing F4. This is where you see your inputs and your outputs. Set up your inputs so that they correspond with your uh, audio interface. So for instance, if your audio interface has four input channels, they should be routed to analog one, two, three, and four. In outputs, you should choose the main outputs if you are using them right now, and you probably are. So choose the first and the second for the first and second channel, or left and right. Okay. Press F4 once again to head out, or press the uh, X icon. Let's take a look on the tools you have. So here's the object selection tool, you have the range selection tool, the splitter, the glue tool, the eraser, the zoom tool, the mute tool, the comp tool, and we'll get to that in a bit. It's You won't get to use it before working with lanes, the time warp tool, the draw tool, the line tool and the play tool. The shortcuts for these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then it jumps to draw on 8, 9. This is because those tools are the ones you are going to use the most. Right here you have your transport panel. You can press record, play, stop, loop, rewind, or fast forward, whatever. And also you have the option of of uh, turning on the click. You can also press C on the keyboard for doing that and change the tempo. One of the first mistakes people do here is just to, for instance, let's say they want to change the tempo from 120 BPM to 110 and they can't do anything about it. They can't double click it or something. This is because the tempo is set to track mode. If you are using dynamic tempo, such as, for instance, on bar 60, the tempo changes from 120 to 110, you work in the tempo track mode. But if you have a fixed tempo all the way through the track, it should be set to tempo fixed mode. Just click on tempo track and it will change to tempo fixed. And then you can double click your tempo and set it to, for instance, 110. The sync is primarily used when you're using some external device. For instance, if you are using SMPTE codes using a tape recorder. Yeah, so that's just the basic layout. And also right here you have your input and your output. And this is a MIDI fader. So if, you're, if there's any MIDI input, it will show up right here. And your master fader right here. In the next tutorial, we'll set up some audio tracks and look at how they behave, what you can do with them, and how you can set up whether it should be stereo or mono, and how you route them around the system. So thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you soon.